All right, good morning. Good morning, Ken. Take it away. Good morning, guys. Appreciate all you guys joining us this morning. Um, last week was a lot of good feedback last week on defensive schemes. So we thought we would uh, just continue on that and go to offensive. So, uh, uh, Dennis, you, before we get started with Jeremy, would you want to let us know what's what's uh, on the next agenda for the next couple of weeks? So next week, um, because of 4th July and Saturday, I think we're going to move that date. Uh, we're not going to do it on Saturday morning. Um, we're waiting for confirmation from the speaker when he could do it, but it'll be NFL referee White Hat, um, Sean Hockley giving us a pretty good presentation. So once I get that date locked in, I'll let everyone know. And um, the following Saturday, I believe we're gonna move that date also to a Thursday. And um, so the next two weeks are kind of up in the air, but there will be some kind of webinar presentation but we're gonna probably move it on a Thursday night just because of the holiday and, and things like that. Excellent. Uh, uh, before I introduce our guest, Jeremy, could you tell us a little bit about, I know you just had a signee, one of your offensive linemen, uh, signed with, uh, is it, uh, I'm sorry, help me out. What's yeah, his name and where did he just sign it? Yeah, so Ty, Tyler Keeney, he's, he actually is a, a defensive end for us and he signed with UCLA. Oh, congratulations to him and your program. That's Thank fantastic. You. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, guys, today our guest is uh, Jeremy Malpin. He's the uh, offensive coordinator at Las Lunas, born and raised in Artesia, grad from New Mexico State University, uh, coached and taught history in Artesia, um, head football coach at uh, Las Lunas High School, uh, state runner-up last year. And he'll probably want to talk a little bit about the officiating in that game. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just letting that go. Uh, but anyway, Jeremy, take it away. And we appreciate you having him uh, with us today. No, man, I appreciate you guys having me on. And uh, I was asked to talk about the spread offense and some things. So I'm going to kind of go through all that. But if you have any questions, don't, don't hesitate. I'll try to answer them the best I can. And... I'm going to make you the host right now. All right. Good. All right. Um, so I was I was asked by Mr. Barella to kind of talk about like why why we do the spread. And so uh just some some keys for us and why we like the spread. Obviously, I'm from Artesia. Um, you know, I think Cooper Henderson's probably one of the gurus of the spread offense in New Mexico and kind of getting some things going there. Um, so I, I've learned a lot from him, still call him a lot and ask him a lot of questions. But uh, the biggest thing for us in the spread is, is we feel like it creates matchups for us. It creates matchups across the board in the running game, uh, in our passing game, individual receivers. Uh, we can, we can kind of dictate what a lot of people are going to do. Um, I know a lot of people out there say, hey, you, you know, you go to the spread to throw the ball. Uh, last year, uh, if you look at our numbers and break them down, which we try to do every year, we were a lot closer to 60-40 run last year to pass than we were. I mean, 60-40, we were a lot, you know, 60% of the time we were running the ball. And it, it's really just because of what we're seeing on the defense, uh, what, the, what we believe the spread does to us, and then kind of shifting some guys around helps us out. Um, Big, like I said, you know, 60-40 run, we, it's because last year we felt like um, our, our running game was really a strength. We had a really good offensive line. We had some big guys over there. Um, but we believe that going to the spread also help, makes teams kind of make sacrifices. Like two years ago, um, my first year here, and then the first half of my second year here, we had a quarterback that was probably one of the best scramblers uh, in the state during the, those years. So we ran the ball a lot. And what we got is we got a lot of teams that were kind of packing the box on us. And, and we really struggled a lot of times to run the ball um, because teams were just packing it in and we weren't great at throwing it. And so, uh, you know, that quarterback actually got hurt in 2018. And then we've had another guy the last year and a half and he's not a runner at all. You know, he's, he's a, a bigger guy, um, but 
throws the ball really well. And so what we, you know, the defenses have changed throughout those two years. But what it's what it did is it forced teams to to kind of go back into a coverage scheme against us because we were throwing the ball so well. And it really opened up running lanes for us. And we had a really good year running the ball. Um, and then we kind of used the pass just to kind of help us along the way. Um, I, I think a lot of people, even like Artesia, you know, coming from Artesia is we're, we're pretty simple. You know, I'm, when I got here, I, I wasn't trying to put in 150 plays and 40 different formations and all these different things. We wanted to, you know, we, we, we use our bands. Our arm band is pretty simple and we, we kind of have like five runs and five passes that we go with. Um, now we've added some over the years, but we really come back to those 10 plays when we're in trouble or, or really just to get the ball going. So we're pretty simple. So I'm going to kind of share with you some of the formations and things that we have and you'll, it, it's not very many. So uh, first one, this is our a set. Uh, we, we call it ACE. Um, it's our, our base formation, just a two by two. Uh, we only have one formation. I'll show you where we actually put in a tight end. Um, we, we really like the slot. We, we run a lot of things out of our slots. We, we try to put some of our best athletes at the slot position. Um, I also kind of put up there a 4-1 cover two. That's probably, when we're throwing the ball well, that's probably the most common defense that we're going to see. And obviously, I know people call it a 4-3. We call it a 4-1 just to help our offensive linemen. Um, understand that there's five guys in the box. And so if we, when we call it a 4-3, and you'll see I have a slide here in a second that talks about the 4-3, that, that changes our blocking scheme a lot with what we have to do because now we, we consider that seven guys in the box. But we also know we've got some good matchups because we got man coverage across the board. So A set, that's, that's our most common thing. We're in that uh, about 50% of the time. Um, and we can run our whole offense out of that set. Uh, we like trips a lot. Obviously, we just move one of the slots over either way. Uh, we can do this in a lot of different ways. Uh, we have set calls where they just line up that way. Uh, I, I, I love motion. I go to a lot of coaching clinics. I went to some Glazier clinics this year, and the I mean motion is 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 huge in uh, a lot of states I don't I don't know that our state's huge with motion I know there's teams that do it but there's teams in like I, we went to one in Arizona and there's a team that every single play they're motioning somebody just to confuse defense or get shifting defenses so we're, we're going to probably use it a little bit more uh this year but we do like trips um quads uh is is big for us too and, and honestly uh you know we put four guys on one side and I, I would say probably 60% of the time we're going to throw to the single side because we end up with single side coverage on that back side. And so we, we, we do a lot of good things there, um, get a lot of really good matchups away from quads. Um, we also kind of like quads, we call it our no back set when we're a three by two. So we can put that running back, um, you know, we, we spend a lot of times with our running backs, making sure they can catch the ball. Um, or we can put in one of our extra slots if we have to. We've had to do that. I think my first year, our running back wasn't a very good pass catcher. So we, we run a lot of no back. Um, you can see, again, we're pretty simple. Like, we don't change a lot of who's on the line of scrimmage. We normally keep our X and our Z, which are outside receivers, uh, on the line of scrimmage just to make it easy. Because, um, honestly, sometimes when we try to do things and switch some of those things up, we've gotten – uh, penalties because our guys don't understand that all the time. We got to do a better job of coaching that up. Uh, the only time that we do is we, we do run a V trip set, but again, we, we call V trips uh, in the huddle. So we go and line up that way. Um, so we, we can run V trips tight. We can run V trips from a wide formation and really even going back, like we're not always just completely balanced there in our ace set. We can we allow those slots to to walk in and out, and they can line up by the Z. They can line up by our tackle. Um, they can line up. They can split them. Um, so we give them a lot of freedom to kind of walk out there. And and I'll talk about one thing we do here in a little bit, and the reason why we like them to walk in and out. Uh, so V trips, and then uh, when I when I got here, I uh, you know I. I was a, I played Landry Jones. You probably heard that name. 
he was a freshman when I was a senior. So I, I got to watch him when I was in college, when he was uh, playing college ball. And they, they had a quarterback named Blake Bell, um, who I, I, he's a tight end. I think he just signed with the Dallas Cowboys now. But they had a package where they put Blake Bell in the backfield. They called him the Bell Dozer. And they had a lot of success running some things out of that. So we put this in um, two years ago. And, and last year, it was huge for us. I think uh, out of this formation, we scored uh, like 18 uh, rushing touchdowns on only like 26 attempts. So 18 for 26 and 18 of those were touchdowns. So um, really good formation for us. We, we put some of our big guys in. The guy that we had at quarterback last year, he's, he, he just signed with UNM. Uh, his name is Bryce Santana. He's going to play defensive end uh, for UNM. The tight end is that Tyler Keeney kid that you talked about. He's going to UCLA. He'll be back with us this year. Um, and so we kind of fill in these spots with some extra D linemen. So it's a really heavy package for us that we like a lot. Um, so these are the different fronts that we see. Um, I kind of talked about earlier. I know uh, Mr. Burrell asked me to talk a little bit about like a uh, running back um, pass protection, how we protect with our running back. So based on the front, so we, this is one of the first things we teach offensive linemen and our running backs is we have them count how many guys are inside the tackles. Um, and it helps determine uh, where the running back's going to block. So our basic rule is a running back is going to get the sixth guy. Um, and, and if we have six guys in the box, like in this four, two, um, we tell the running back, we want you to pick which one you don't think is going to come, um, which is probably a little bit different than other places. Like if the, the mic's up here walking around and we think he's going to come and this guy's kind of leaning back on his heels, we're going to have the running back call here because we want our five linemen, we want them to block um, those, you know, we want, we want our linemen blocking and we don't want our running back have to block, especially because – in New Mexico football, we can't cut. So you, you watch the NFL, you watch college, nine times out of ten that running back is coming up, and he's not meeting some linebacker shoulder to shoulder that a lot of times they're cutting that guy. Well, we can't do that, so we're trying to limit those blocks um, from happening in the first place. So um, it, it kind of helps us a little bit with that rule. Um, when we get into seven-man fronts, uh, we have a couple different rules because – what, what we like about seven man fronts is that means we're getting straight man coverage on the outside. So we're, we got four guys, we've got only four guys that can play coverage. And so we can do some things. So a lot of times we, we don't, we don't bring in any extra protection. We just try to get rid of the ball quickly. Um, and, and that's been helpful for us. Um, again, like I said before, we see the four one or the 50 are probably the most common defenses that we see. Um, the three three stack, we we've only seen a couple teams do that against us. I think that's one of the harder defenses to 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 work against, though, because if you go three three stack, you're you're going to be bringing those three linebackers a lot, and and it makes it a little bit confusing for our linemen. So uh, we don't see that a lot, but when we do, we've had trouble with it. I think my first game in Los Lumas, uh, we played Aztec, and they were running a three three stack, and it gave us, it gave us some trouble, um, but we were able to get outside a little bit and do some things. Um, so kind of continuing with that running back blocking schemes. Um, our goal with the running back is to only block when we absolutely have to. Uh, we really try, uh, we, we believe the best block and we try to just run a lot of routes with that running back and take people out of coverage. Um, like when we play, we played Roswell High twice last year in the regular season, and then we played them in, in the state championship game. And Roswell likes to bring a lot of pressure. And so what we did in the state game against them is we just started releasing that running back, uh, and it, it gave them some trouble in the first half. And so it, it kind of gave us a little bit more timing in the pocket, allowed us to move the ball a little bit better than we had been able to against Roswell High. So um, really that's the best block because – our running backs, we don't have the biggest guy. You know, we're not a power team, so we want fast guys. We want more of a receiver-type body in the backfield. So having to block linebackers every play isn't good for us. So we really try to create opportunities for them to not have to block. Um, 
if, if, if we can't do that, then we do have them pick up the sixth threat. We talked about that in the last slide, you know, pick up the guy you don't think is going to come so that if you don't have to block, you don't have to block. Um, but if he does, then we, we try to pick up the first outside threat. We don't really want to block in defensive ends. So if we have six guys in the box, then he will have to take one of those inside linebackers. But nine times out of 10 for us, he's going to pick the, the first threat on the outside. So I said, we see that four, one, what we call the four, one a lot. So one of those outside linebackers is, is walking up like he's going to come. The three back will make the call to that side. Um, and then we'll kind of check back with our unblocked lineman. So like in a 4-1, if our center's unblocked, he'll check that Mike linebacker. And if he doesn't come, then he can peel out and help us on the backside. Um, the biggest thing with our offense, too, I'm going to show you some clips here in just a second, too. Um, you'll see – we, we don't like taking sacks, so we really try to get the ball out of our hands in three to five seconds. So most of our routes, most of what we do are timing routes, and we, we work a ton of that in practice. So when we're in practice over and over and over again, we throw routes on air. We run seven on seven. Everything we're trying to do, we're trying to get the ball out of our hands quick. We try to make most of our reads pre-snap so that the quarterback's not stuck in the backfield reading a bunch of different things. We do have routes that take longer for, you know, third and longs and, and different things like that. But for the most part, we're going to try to get the ball out of our hands fast. We're going to try to make those decisions quick so that we can get the ball moving down the field and uh, positive yards. Uh, one other thing you asked me to talk about is just our re wide receiver routes. Um, again, we're pretty vanilla. You know, a lot of guys – use a route tree I mean when we're in practice we go through the route tree pretty much every single day um, now we have all we have different names for all these you know when I was in Artesia it was all a number based system we've we've changed that here in Los Lunas um, but it's it's we we've changed to what the routes numbers are it's probably a little bit different like if you compared it to Artesia or different places we, we kind of went back through and made some changes on our own um, but we stick to this from the left side, right side. Our even routes are all in routes, um, and our odds are all some some version are out. The only one that's kind of weird is the zero route, um, but it's it, that one's more of a of a longer throw. So we we just kept it as a zero. But uh, pretty pretty vanilla there in the passing game. I'll show you some things that we do, but you can see pretty much all of them have set yards on when you're going to break, like our two route. Um, if we're under center, it's a one-yard break. If we're in shotgun, it's a three-yard break. And we determine which receiver we're going to throw to pre-snap, and we're just catching and throwing. And so we're getting the ball out of our hands, you know, there within one second because we're going real fast. Um, so all these are timing routes. Even our like our nine, our vertical route, we make that decision pre-snap. Um, we catch, turn, and throw. And we just try to put some air under it and let guys run under it. So – those are our receiver routes. Uh, another thing I asked, got asked to talk about was, and, and I'm going to show you all these things in, in film too, so you can see what I'm talking about um, based on film. We're, we're not a huge RPO team. I know that's kind of the, all the rage right now. We have RPO in our game, uh, in our game plan, but it's, you know, we're, we're not as much as other teams. We, we kind of steal from other teams. I heard, like Cueva's coach talked one time about RPOs. We stole some of the things they were doing. Um, but we, we don't do a ton of RPO stuff. But what we do, uh, we base it on our personnel. So, like I said, my first year and a half here, we had a quarterback that could run. So, we didn't really, we didn't really want to throw the ball very much. So, it was more like quarterback reads or quarterback keeps. I put a couple of those clips in so you can see those. Um, where he's, you know, we'll leave the backside end unblocked and he'll ride down. And if that end follows the running back, then we can keep it out the backside. But those are more like run-run options. Um, then uh, after he got hurt, we our quarterback was more of a thrower. So I put a, a – I think I, I think only have one in there. Like I said, we don't do it very often, but I think I put one in there and we didn't complete it. That's probably why we didn't do it very much anyways. But um, last year and, and the year – kind of the half year before that, we were doing more of the true RPO um, where we're ride, we're blocking run with our linemen. And then we're trying, if we, if we see linebacker crashing, 
then we're going to try to get it out of our hand really quick. Um, like I said, RPO, it's something, you know, it's something we do. It's not what we do. Um, last year we added something called show where we actually just ride the three back um, and we can do a lot of different things. I'll show you some film on that as well. Um, so we run it, but we're not blocked. We're still pass protecting. Um, we also put in, um, and I don't have any clips of it. I forgot to do that one, but we did put in last year as well. We put in one where we, we fake a run block. Um, we like block down, 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 and we pull backside guard, but we set up into a pass pro out of that. And it just got some linebackers coming up and then we're able to take some shots downfield because we were kind of freezing linebackers and safeties. Um, uncovered, um, Mr. Morris probably remembers that from uh, being in Artesia. That, that's kind of our RPO is if we see um, a blitzing linebacker on the outside and the safety's not coming up, then we're just going to raise up and throw to those slots. And we're going to make teams struggle to want to bring seven people against us because we're just going to get it out of our hands and let our slots go one-on-one. -on -one. Our goal there is to get, you know, about four or five yards. You know, we do that three times in a row. We're going to be getting a lot of yards and we're going to be getting them fast. So what it does too is it kind of starts getting safeties to creep up. It gets linebackers to be a little bit hesitant on blitzing. And so it's allowed us to kind of do some things. I got some clips of that. Um, but it forces teams to kind of stay outside and then we come back and we can run the ball. And then those linebackers start creeping back inside. And then we throw it back outside and then they go back outside. So we kind of play that game uh, where we kind of make those linebackers have to decide some things going on there. Um, uh, show has helped that as well because we can show and if those linebackers are coming up, then we can raise up and throw uncovered. So we do some of that as well. Uh, that's the end of my slide. So let me uh, get out of there and I'll pull up my. Jeremy, there was one question in the chat room. Oh, yeah. Do you, okay. see, do you see a lot of 3-4 defense or 8-3 as it's being called by some? Yeah, we get we, – we call it – you know, we're kind of the old school. We call it the 50 um, in that 3-4. So it, it amounts to us to being like a 3-2. But because we're spread so much, those, those third and fourth linebackers for us, they have to be back out wide because they have to be over our slots unless they want to run some man coverage. So we like, uh, we play PV every year, PV runs that three, four defense against us, but those linebackers kind of, and I have some film of them and I'll show you kind of what we have to do against them if they want to bring those outside linebackers. But we don't, we don't get a lot of like, we, we don't get a lot of just teams that blitz us and blitz us and blitz us because I believe we get the ball out of our hand pretty fast. Okay. That can I answer that question. Is that? I think so. Thank you. Oh yeah, here's the first clip. So, PV. Um, this is that three-four defense that you'll see uh, here. Um, we call this coverage quarters two. They're across the line. They're covering deep. So what we do is we our quarterback saw that both outside linebackers are coming. It's third and eight. But if we, I'm I'm aggressive. So if we're if we're, if we're on our side of the field, um, and we we got a manageable fourth down, I'm gonna go for it probably nine out of ten times. But you can see we're a little slow getting the ball out of our hands right here. But this is that uncovered I was talking about. So those linebackers came off the edge. Our quarterback recognizes it, and he's just gonna raise up and throw the ball to our slot. And so what we end up with, we end up with just one on one with. The, our slot in the safety, safety comes up, makes a good tackle, but we still fall forward. And so we end up getting about, I think he marks us, yeah, about almost six yards, five yards right there uh, on an uncovered play. Um, and so what it does is it forces these linebackers here then to have to kind of stay, stay out some. Hey, PD is one of the- Jeremy, the yes. video, your screen froze. We can't see the video. We just see um, the PowerPoint. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, maybe I have to stop share and then reshare. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. So I'll go back to that one. So you can see there's that 3-4 defense. Um, 
quarterback sees linebackers coming up, both outside linebackers. They're going to bring a lot of guys right there. So we just raise up and throw. That's our uncovered. Take five yards. We end up with a, you know, a fourth and four, fourth and three, able to go. So PV is one of the only teams, too, that they started doing this. We call it like monster. They go to like a 3-1. They leave these outside linebackers. They cheat these safeties up a little bit, but then they drop one of the, the linebackers. They take him off the field, and they bring in an extra safety. So we end up more, and it's because we were throwing the ball pretty well against them, so this is late in the game, and we kind of end up with this shell. Um, this is just one of the instances. I want to show you how fast we get the ball out, plus this is uh, our show. So just you'll see it kind of freezes the corner. But right now our quarterback comes up, and because the safety's cheated over to the wide side of the field, right now he's already decided that because we this is our we call it money. It's our vertical, our, our nine route. You'll see he's going to already make the decision to go here. So snaps, a, a quick show, not a ride, just a show. It freezes some linebackers, and then we're over the top. And so the ball's out of our hands, and, you know, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000 balls out of our hands. That's the goal. We take teams that want to try to blitz us. We try to get them out of their game plan, and we just get after them that way. Um, this was from a couple years ago. This is, I told you, like, uh, we, this was kind of our run-run option where we're going to read the backside. So we're going to ride running back. We get the flow. You see all the flow from all the linebackers, the defensive line. They all go towards the ball, and our quarterback can walk in on the backside. So we were doing a lot more of that uh, my first year. This is in the playoffs this year. So um, we we came out against Artesia, and we ran the ball really, really well against them this year. And so when we came out in the second half, we want, we had worked a lot of RPO that week because we thought they would go to this. Um, so you see for them, this is more like a 4-3 defense because those linebackers are a little bit tighter. And they they were just sprinting to our running back anytime we showed um, when we started the second half. So we came out and we tried to run this RPO. So we're going to read. This is uh, our 639 or our uh, outside zone play. We're going to read this outside linebacker. If he steps up, then we're just going to replace him with the slot, and we're going to try to hit him into that spot as fast as we can so we don't get the penalty of linemen downfield. So you can see right there he's open, but we throw behind him. Uh, we catch it. We probably have a really good play right there. But you see kind of what Artesia was doing. They were selling out to stop the run just because we ran the ball really well against them the first half. So that's, that's one of the few RPOs that we ran. You can see we weren't very good at it, so that's why we didn't run it a whole lot. But um, if we would have completed it, it could have been a big play for us. Um, this is uh, another money play. This is from the state championship game. Just, again, showing you what we're trying to do. So 4-1, four, four common defense. This guy is out a little bit wider than him, so our three-back automatically makes a right call. So this will be the three-backs guy um, if, if he ended up coming. If he doesn't, he's going to step up and just run a route out here and try to pull the Mike linebacker out there with him. But we're trying to get rid of the ball quick. This is in the fourth quarter. And so we run our money quarterback quick look off, and then we're throwing the ball within three to five seconds. Uh, he threw a really good ball. Big play for us. Um, so we, we run a lot of verticals if we get good matchups on the outside corners cheating up on us. Um, talked a lot about our motion. We, we run motion, uh, jet sweep. We do some other things. This is our jet sweep motion. We lead with our three back. Um, really good play for us last year. We ran it a lot. We have both of our slots coming back this year, both really good at running that. Um, our, this is just the same same play, but from the wideout position. So I said we don't change the lineup here on who's on the line of scrimmage very often. So teams should be able to pick up when we do. We're we're usually running some sort of motion back into the into the away from that. So we ran motion. We don't get in here. Goddard was pretty good side to side. 
Um, here is uh, no back. So uh, one of our formations told you we like to we like to run some no back. This is our running back out here. He's always to the trip side. And you can kind of see it just spreads out. So the whole game, Roswell staying in a 4-2. But when we would go no back, we would get these linebackers to spread out with us. Um, and we would even get the mic have to, re, you know, check him a little bit. So what we were able to do then is we just motioned back into it and we were running the ball. So we were running our inside zone play just out of motion um, because it was giving us some matchups there. Um, because it was the only time we were getting them out of a six-man front. So we had a, a hat on everybody. We could block everybody. And we kind of ran away from that six guy. Another no-back play. Um, we, we, like I said, we run a lot of stuff to our slots. Uh, this is what we call two option. The slot reads that linebacker that's covering him. He can run a lot of different routes. So it's our two receiver. So that linebacker opens up and stays outside. We're in no back. So we've got him spread and it leaves the middle of the field open. Uh, we run a lot of that stuff. Um, it helps us a lot. Here's our quads. Um, first game of the year last year, PV. You can see it kind of spreads them out. This guy's kind of in no man's land. He, he probably can get under the flats but he can't do it all the time. He's not as fast to get it out there because he's still, and I don't know why they're respecting he can run because he, he's not a runner, but um, we get these guys out here. We got him to call a timeout right after this because we came back and threw a little screen over to the quad side because we were really four on three on that side. But on this one, again, getting the ball out of our hands quick and just playing that little outside route there. The corner's deep and belling, so we just play catch. Um, Good play for us. This is a uh, sorry um, quads right. Uh, we have this is our little freshman quarterback. He's more of a runner. Again, you can see what quads did to Roswell. It got us into a true five man front, which we. We, we like our five against most people five uh, last year. So if we can get teams into a five-man front, we were going to try to do it. So we put him in, and you can see it just opens up a big lane for us, uh, big play. Safety's having to come up and make the tackle. Um, so that, that's the other reason why we like going quads or no back some too if we have a QB that can run the ball. This is that rhino package that we had in there, and you can see we're very heavy. We got a bunch of big guys. Uh, we can run it. We, we, we're pretty simple on this. We can run it left, right, or middle. That's about it. And then we come and just open up the floodgates. And he was a big old boy that could move. When I got here, he was a quarterback. But I, in our offense, he wasn't going to help us a lot of QB. So we moved him to the defensive side of the ball, and he was big for us. Like I said, he just signed with UNM. This is one I had a quite – we got a penalty on this play. Um. Uh, I was going to ask you guys. So we're we're in punt formation here, which I know uh, it, it changes a little bit on how, uh, you know, numbers aren't as, as involved. Because at the very beginning of the year, we ran this formation and we got against PV and they told us that we couldn't have uh, low numbers on the offensive line. But then they came back later a few weeks and told us that they had discussed it and and that we could because it was a punt formation and it's a little bit different rules. But you can see here what we're trying to do is we're trying to leave him off the line of scrimmage, him off the line of scrimmage, and both these guys have checked with the official and they they were told they were on, even though he probably needs to be up more. But um, And then we're going to release one of these uh, numbered guys for a fake. But up here, we, we end up checking on. So we should have got a penalty on this play. But um, I just wanted to throw it in there. Uh, we, we run our same formation out of our punt. So you can see we kept these guys so we wouldn't get linemen downfield because technically he would be your fifth lineman. Um, but just something I wanted to throw in there. See if you, uh, we, like I said, we should have probably got a penalty for this, but I don't even know if it's legal or not. So if you have thoughts on this, uh, it'd be great to know because it's a great fake for us. But 
we should have got a penalty on that side for having too many guys in the line of scrimmage. And I think that's all I got. Oh, I got one more. This is this one formation that we ran um, just against Alamo. We put all of our receivers, but we kept the running back in the backfield. We wanted to see what they did here. Um, and then we came back and kind of ran the ball that way. We just called it Z over. Um, I know we couldn't throw the ball to him. He's covered, but there's some things we could do. We just ran the ball out of it, but that's just one more formation we threw in there just to kind of throw some teams off. So uh, I'll stop now and I'll answer any questions. I It wouldn't let me see the chat as we went, but any questions or anything I can answer, um, let me know. Rules are different for numbering for one to three down and fourth down. What does that mean? Sorry. Yeah, on the uh, punt formation, the numbering exception on first through third down, if you're in a scrimmage kick formation, only applies to the snapper. If I it's on you. fourth down, then the numbering rules just don't apply at all. Just the ends are eligible. You still have to have seven on the line. Okay, so I was, I, I'm good with that formation. I just got to make sure that the receivers stay off the line to not cover up that guy. Right. Nice. Good. Hey, Jeremy, yeah, do you want to pull up that clip again? Um, yeah. And, and we can step through it. I think you had a question on is it a foul or not a foul? Yeah. And, and I mean, the reality is, is um, and we'll step through it, um, your receiver gets covered up as that guy comes on the line right before the snap. Yeah, and, and you can see, I think I, I probably sh it's probably I think later on in the year I, I started uh, telling the officials what we were gonna do because you can kind of see our receiver once is is trying to start off the line and the official actually tells him he needs to come up on the line so he's off and then you can see the official kind of motions him to scoot up mm -hmm. and so we kind of get ended up covering that guy on accident you know, rather than we, he was trying to stay off the line of scrimmage without making it too obvious. But it should have been a foul for sure in this game. Yeah, he's legal if he's uh, not covered. In this case, he did get covered there at the last second. Yeah, and as long as he's on the line of scrimmage, correct? Well, you know, you, you have to have, a you know, the right I, number on the line of scrimmage, or we usually count how many are in the backfield to do yeah. the math a little quicker. But, yeah, right now this does not look like a legal formation. Yeah, he, he has to be on, he has to be on, and they both have to be off for it to be legal, which is how we drew it up. But, you know, kids, we don't always get it put, sure. put in there, but it worked out in this one. Jeremy, if you could send me that this on huddle, um, we'd like to discuss this a little bit more, especially about – if you if this guy at the end on top of the screen is supposed to be off and the ref is telling him to get on the ref is actually making it a illegal formation for you if you're if you're coaching your receiver your wide receiver or your your end guy there to be off yeah uh, we, so we just need to make that clear to the to the yeah. officials yeah. yeah receivers need to tell us where they want to be on or off yes sir yeah, and, and like, I, like I said, as we progress in the year, I, I this was always a formation I told them, hey, we may run a fake on our punt. The outside receiver is going to tell you he's going to be off to not cover up the defensive end or the, the our uh, tackle. So it, it worked out. This, this, is, this is the only time we ran it, so I just wanted to ask you guys some questions, but I'll share it with you on huddle. Yeah, that's a good training. This, for us. Yeah. Hey, Dennis. This, yeah. Hey, Dennis. This was my game. This is the one that – this is the play that – we that we discussed at the halftime because none of us knew where he came out of right because um i lost him i didn't see him where he i i didn't see where he came out of and the wing official didn't see where where he, we didn't know where he came out of where he originated from right we thought he started in the backfield and actually when that night when i went home and i watched the game i i watched it i i saw it and i that's when i knew we we screwed that one up. Right. And so I think if, if personally, if we moved that receiver up on the line and made it a illegal formation, that's something we need to just discuss as a crew to make yeah. sure we do that. Um, because then if we throw a flag on that, we're penalizing this team twice. Right. Cause we're yeah. making it, we're making it illegal and then we're going to give them a foul for it. So we just, and then, and then if we, 
you know, then hit him with an illegal man downfield. That's a third one on the team where it should have been legal to begin with if we went to move the guy right. on our own. So you, you I think know, Dennis, it's a good training clip. So um, yeah, we'll discuss this this um, summer. Yeah, the line judge or the down judge over here on the on the on the forty side with the two wideouts are in the backfield. You know, they've got to kind of know something's weird when we got two backed up like that. Normally one would be up. Right. And I remember on that. So that's where that wing has got to be aware of it too, because I'm counting five dudes in the backfield already. Right. And I think I remember Simone um, just telling me about this one uh, on a Wednesday or something. I don't remember, but I think I remember seeing this clip already once, but. I, I honestly, too, just my opinion, I, I've kind of voiced it to Dana, I think, too. I think what what hurts you guys a little bit, too, is we clip our films and you miss a lot of the first, you know, initial setups or whatever because we we may not start our camera until right at the snap. That right. makes sense. Right. Because, yeah, because in our film – both of these guys, even though they look to us in the backfield, you can see we have because we we have a like an entire film we where we make highlights and things. Both of these guys check with the official, and the official tells them they're both on. Right, and we so, have discussed yeah. discussed the huddle film with with uh, Animal A's office about giving us more of film during dead ball because there's a lot of dead ball officiating going on that we don't mm -hmm. actually get on video. Yeah, uh, but I think there's a question in the chat also on on the jet sweep. How are you teaching the block by the slot on the linebacker? Yeah, and yeah, because we got we got called on that in one game, like a crack a crackback block. But we're we're teaching him. He's got the linebacker, and really, you know, we're we're teaching him to set up and get his hands up, like like you guys have kind of told us at like the coaching clinic. Um, so that we can have our hands up and ready to, we're not, we're not initiate, we're not going and just putting a shoulder into somebody. So we're really just trying to set the edge because what we get a lot when we go into that jet motion, let's see if I can pull one up here, is we get that linebacker. Um, I think this is jet motion. We get this linebacker up here on the outside a lot of times like this guy takes off running the sideline, but a lot of times they're wider and they start running inside. So we really just try to set an edge. And if he wants to come inside, we kind of just make it where he has to go through us to get back outside or try not to go, you know, like the old days motion down and just crack that dude and knock him out. We're trying to make sure that we're meeting him with open hands. If that answers the question. Yeah, I think so. Um, Perfect answer. Hey, Stevon, did that answer your question? That was, that's exactly it. Uh, uh, still a lot we get teams that aren't teaching that, and it's a blindside block if you don't come out with your hands. So uh, that's why I, I really like to talk to coaches and see how they're setting it up and letting the defense more come into them. You know, it's still a block. You're still going to be able to set that edge. Um, you're just not bringing in that uh, safety issue of, you know, knocking out a guy out that doesn't see it coming. So I think that was a perfect answer for that. Thank you, Coach. Yes, yeah, thanks. And, and Sean, going back to that pump formation, anything else, uh, Mr. Bennett? Sorry about that. I was on mute. No, nothing else. Uh, well, you know, we'll talk about it as, as a uh, group. But one of the things we talked about right after this play is who's going to see um, that lineman release. Um, you can, from that, formation you see that the you know line judge had to you know look like they were off the line but you know he had two on his side the head linesman had one on his side on and one in the slot um, the back judge obviously looks at those wide outs and you know the question was is in a five-man formation um, there's really not a tight end but in this case he was the tight end and release so one of the things we'll talk through is from that training video is who's going to see that guy release and who's going to, you know, to the earlier point, know where he came from. Right. Especially if we're already getting a heads up by the coach and pre. Yeah, they're going exactly. to so as far as the other, the other question, um, as, as 
why did the officials tell the other two that they were on the yard on the line of scrimmage when they actually looked like they were two yards off? That's more of a judgment on the officials, uh, making them legal, putting them on the line. So, um, whatever that uh, line of scrimmage official decided on that on that actual play of making them legal, that's that's a judgment. Mm -hmm. So. We'll just leave well, it. And one of the things we can talk about, I don't know if we still do it for the wings, um, but indicating if your guys are on or off the line, or if they, you know, you know, motion back one punch or two punches if both are back. I don't know if we've gotten away from that mechanic or if we have some sort of mechanic that indicates both of mine are back or, you know, and I know we normally do it just for the widest guy, but, you know, I don't know, and we can't see it from the film, but, you know, if we could see it wide enough, was that, you know, line judge indicating both off um, by punching back twice or is that mechanic no longer used? I think in high school we're still using that punching back that we have two off. Yeah and to your point um, Dennis this would be a good just training tape to go over with wings and back judges and umpires and everybody. Right. And I think, I, yeah. oh, go ahead, Sorry go. I see a question there the one call that you most often disagree with and why? Um, you know, man, I, I always tell people, I think y'all got the hardest job because no matter what call you make, somebody's going to be mad. So I try not to get too mad um, at, at things in a football game. Um, I honestly, probably nine out of 10 times you call holding, I feel like we are holding. So I don't, I don't really disagree with holding that much. It happens. I think probably the only thing that I've been upset with is um, honestly, it's probably more with Goddard than anybody else is I feel like we get hit late a lot, like laying on the ground. Um, we, we get hit and I, I probably get the most upset with, with that not being called, especially in today's football. Is that on the quarterback or just late hit? Uh, yeah, like 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 we'll 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 run the ball and we'll like our I think uh, I bet I could pull it up real fast. We have a there's a clip uh, we when we were playing I think two years ago. Our quarterback runs and slides, and he's kind of laying on the ground, and uh, he kind of he gets hit when he's on the ground. And so uh, what I thought was kind of late that that's probably that that was a no call that I thought should have been called, but. I don't think I get mad very often about things that get called because uh, I think you guys know it's a lot of things are judgment. You know, you get receiver in the corner battling back and, you know, whatever. You may call pass interference on the defense or pass interference on the offense, and you're probably right both times. So I'm, I'm pretty good with everything. Right. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Does anybody else have any other questions? We're about 50 minutes in, doing pretty good on time. Hey coach, one, one thing I wanna say, uh, as officiating your games, you're always a class act on the, on the sideline and you're always uh, awesome to talk to. And that's one thing I really appreciate you doing is before the game, you, you talk to us and you're approachable. And then also throughout the game, you. You're not disrespectful, so that's one thing I really appreciate you about about you, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm man. I like I said, I, 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 re, I when I was a, in high school, I ref some basketball games, like you know, city league, and man, I got chased out in the parking lot some games. So I, I know it's it's a not always a a good position to be in. So I don't want to be that guy. Not that I have never been, but I try not to be, you know. So I appreciate what you guys do. And just so everyone knows, hey, Coach. I'm getting a lot of Go ahead. traffic on, on the chat that I'll make sure every region gets that uh, punt formation and a quick little synopsis of what we're looking at. That way all the groups get it in the state. Hey, Coach, this is Ken. I, I want to uh, agree with Simone there. Some coaches aren't approachable, so it makes communication tough. Um, so uh, I, I, I just want to thank you again for being an approachable coach. I wish when you guys uh, have coaching webinars, you could 
kind of uh, talk about how us officials, you know, try to communicate better and you guys don't always make it uh, easy for us to communicate. And if so, if those lines of communication are open and there's free flowing information, it, it, it makes it easier for everybody to be on the same page. So I hope you can maybe when your coaches seminar, you can kind of relay the information during the seminar that came out about communication. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I, I can do that for sure. I know we talk about, you know, that stuff a lot. And so I, I really think there's more coaches out there that, that talk about that stuff positively than there are negatively. And I think we could, we could all name the coaches that are a little harder to talk to on the sidelines. So I, I will do my best to, to relay that for sure. Did you have any more film that you wanted to wanted to show us or? Um, I, I think that's, I was trying to find that one clip, but I, I, I won't be able to find it fast. So I'm, I'm good unless I, you know, I can answer any questions you guys have or. If you can make me uh, the host again real quick. Oh yeah. Sorry. Let me. So if um, nobody else has any more questions, that's our webinar presentation for this Saturday. Like I said, uh, next week will be a presentation by Sean Hockley, NFL referee, going into his fourth or fifth year as the referee, seventh year in the NFL. Um, I've already sat through two of his presentations this this spring and summer and it's, it's, he gives a really great presentation on um, traits of official I believe is what it's called something like that but um, it'll be next Thursday I'm hoping Thursday or Friday I'll let everyone know by email uh, what day he confirms. Ken? Hey Jeremy thank you for coming on taking the time on this Saturday morning um, everybody, it was great uh, conversation, good questions. Um, everybody stay safe and thanks for joining. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Yeah, thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you, Coach.